All right, I'm gonna show you my new track system and my setup here. So this is the new hay shed that we finally finished building. It took us about three weeks, but we could only, the first week we only had three days because they didn't deliver the materials in time. And then we only had three days a week to work on it when my husband was off of work. So not too shabby. That's my hay shed in my tack room. That wall is my hitching wall. A rail wasn't working, they can go under it and they're annoying. They always want to eat everything on the ground so they were not cooperating. Over there is my old hay shed and it is stuffed to the gills with hay right now. So that is very nice. Um, we will be getting on Thursday and Friday the hay that will fill this hay shed up. So this part here is for the bottom cat. So it'll be handy for winter, hay storage, and my feed area. So it's no longer in the garage, attracting all the mice in the entire neighborhood up here. They love our garage because of the feed. So I know I've showed pictures of my tack room, but I will show a little video. And so, this side is my personal tack. So this is all the stuff that I use, <clears throat> not daily, but Zoro's and Sky's harnesses, extra pieces and parts, my bells. I just got two new harness bags. So those are gonna be handy. Then that back wall is Chimicum. So all the hoof boots that I have, the shoes that I need to sell, um, well, that's mine, of course, but that's a metal, that's a little 12 by 12 metal picture of Zorro, my baby unicorn. There's all my yacht ropes and different grooming collars. And then this wall is all the collars and hames that I have. And then excess halters. These, this is just stock for Chimicum. All these halters and other lead ropes and little bins filled with goodies. Um, quick really shackles, bits, gremlin bells. Uh, these are all fly masks. This box is full of fly masks. So I've got lots of those. And then I've got all my, it's hard to see the lighting, but all the garlands that I use throughout the year. My little unicorn. So that's my tack room. It's looking pretty good. I hung these hangover buckets to put extra stuff in in here. This is all my extra hardware and whatnot. And my brushes and then all my sprays that I use every day. So, that's a peek inside my tech room. Now we'll head out to the Beginning of the track. This lovely long gate that swings. Swinging gates is kind of a novelty in my life. <laughs> so when you come in the gate, there's this way on the track, or you can come around this way behind the shed. So we've got this width because I figure in the winter time shelter from the wind and the snow um, and the shed is probably going to make it so the snow doesn't pile up back here over here is their water the hundred gallon water trough just wasn't staying clean so I need to clean this but it's much easier I clean it daily and and they drink it down almost every day so. this is what I'm going to call the beach eventually it's going to be all sand down here. This is just sand that my husband scooped up with the bobcat and brought over from their other little lot that they were in while we were trying to get this built, this track built. So he brought the sand in here and then just, you can just see here and then he filled up this shed, this little shed that this is their little shelter from my friends Jim and Kareem. So 
that has sand in it and then there's sand out in front. But I want sand to go all the way to the corners. We're gonna pound a post and put this scratcher in. We just forgot to do that when my neighbor was here pounding all these. So we'll do that maybe this fall. And then behind here, they can get behind here in this corner. And um, I don't think we'll need to add any more sand back here. So they can go around the shelter. And there's the beach again. That corner. And then we're on this back corner. So again, we have the little foraging stations where I dribble bits of hay pellets. They're on a really strict diet right now, so they don't get that every day. And very, they get very little. This gate here goes out to the manure pile and out to my driving track. That's how out there is my driving track. Over there is my little dirt work area where we can do relaxing work and stuff without any temptation of grass. And now we're to the feed stations. So we've got rubber mats down. I sweep them twice a day. They usually have hay in the nets, but they were not leaving me alone, so I gave them a little bit. There's Sky. Good girl. Always begging for cookies. Uh oh, I talked to her, so now he has to come see. Is she getting something in there, cutie? Hi, guys. The ponies. <laughs> so, um, this boulder was in the ground actually. See that hole? We filled that hole with dirt, but Zoro digs it out. Anyway, um, this boulder was in there. There were several other big boulders those that were at this end of the track when we scraped the top soil off so that the grass would not grow. Um, pounding these posts was a challenge. You can see it was hard going with the big rocks and boulders that are on this end. So that's the other feed station. So they each have an area. So Zoro likes to share and Sky is a mother and she tells him moms don't share their food. So, and then we come back around to the shed again. So this is a very small track, but I just, they just could not keep up with the bigger track as far as having grass grow on it. So this is what we came up with to battle the grass and keep them healthier. Um, they both slimmed down quite a bit since coming out here. Obviously the food is on the opposite end of the track from the water, which is around the corner over there. So they've got to walk back and forth to drink. And um, based on hoof prints and manure piles, they walk around this track many times during the day. So they do spend a couple hours every afternoon sleeping in the shed and in front of the shed. They love having that. It's so, it's so cute watching them both go in there and lay down and sleep. So. Um, this is what we have. And then the middle, we're going to get a couple chickens next year. I'm not sure if we'll put the chicken shed in the middle right here or what. I have these open where it's tied with twine. This will open all the way and that straight across will open and then that gate opens. So we can drive the bobcat in and out of here. And then over by the water, there's a big 16 foot gate made out of cattle panels as well to drive the bobcat in and out because it's a big giant bobcat, so it needs big gates. So anyway, I wanted to finally give you guys an update on the new track and on how the ponies are doing. So we'll walk back over here and see them again. This guy hasn't been getting any exercise other than the track living. And Zoro's been getting regular driving, and he's definitely lost some weight. So, he's looking pretty good. Good boy. I thought I'd just walk you. This is where they were before, if you saw pictures or anything. They were behind this green shed, and right up to here was a gate. Right here at this corner is where the weeds are. There was a gate, and they just had this little corner. This whole section here was the old track and the water was over there by the green shed. So we've changed a lot of things. Um, that's our shooting range. So we can just come right out the back door and practice with our, with our guns, with our handguns and everything. It's really nice having that. And then 
here's the other shed. My husband's gonna put a big piece of plywood on that side so the snow doesn't go in there. Though, <laughs> there's not much room for snow. It is to the rafters with hay. So this is some hay I got out of Bozeman. It was cut, then it was rained on. They turned it, it dried, they bailed it. So I have to get it tested, but based on how the ponies look, it's definitely low sugar, low starch. Um, so here in Montana, this is what hay looks like that has been rained on and then bailed. So when people say it's bad hay and it's horrible, it isn't always, not here in Montana anyway, where it's dry, if it's allowed to dry. So I'll have to put a gate or something, um, maybe a cattle pen here, so if the ranch horses come over this winter, they can't just stand in the doorway and pull hay bales out. Um, with a bobcat in the tack shed, they won't be able to, or I mean, sorry, with the bobcat parked next to the haystack in here, they won't be able to get in there, so there will be no worries there. Um, so here's my tie wall. I like the wall because they can't get their heads over it or under it and they can't just go back and forth around it. If they're irritated or upset, impatient, they, they can't get around that post. So I have a spot for Sky and Zorro and then their net in the middle. And then on this side, I'm going to put two more ties. So when friends come, they can tie their horses too and we'll, we'll all be right here by the tack shed. So is the outside and that's our property to the north so it's real nice I can literally hitch up right here drive straight out that way and there's my driving track out there so this has opened everything up we'll have an easier time with the snow this winter crossing our fingers and gave me a really nice area for working so I can bring them out here this can be like a little warm-up arena it's all mowed and stuff um, I can get over to my dirt my dirt warm-up if I want to be on the dirt and then the start of my driving track is right here and then it goes all the way around the pasture with little loop-de-loops and little arenas mowed in and different things. So we're finally, we've lived here almost seven years and we're finally getting things kind of organized. It's really nice.